stock cars means winning and winners like Terry Mix, Junior Regan, Sean Dupuis, and Peter Gibbons, all looking for the checkered flag here at the Autodrome in St. Eustache, Quebec, and the Castrol 200. This is the 1995 Cascar Super Series for the Castrol Cup on TSN. Brought to you in part by Mopar Performance Parts, your first choice. Castrol, manufacturers of GTX. GM Goodwrench Service Plus and AC Delco. STP and Prestone. And Dynamax Performance Exhaust. Hello everybody and welcome to round number six of the Cascar Super Series for late model stock cars. The Castrol 200. I'm Pat Gonzalez along with Craig Hill. And Craig, we've reached the halfway point in the Cascar Super Series. Kerry Mix is the points leader in that Midas Monte Carlo, but no one driver has been able to dominate so far this season. Well, it's been a very unusual first half, Pat, you know, and there's several factors in my mind that's led to that. First of all, a lot of the very strong teams from last year have had to make do with meaner budgets this year because the corporations have seen the growth of Cascar, and what they've done is spread their money more to the west and to the east, trying to give everybody a little bit of a chance. Some of them have found it very tough. Also, another factor is the fact that the change of body styles this year. They've gone to the Monte Carlo, and Dodge has introduced that new Avenger. They've had a little bit of trouble sorting that car out, and it's only won one race this year. I expect to see it do better as the time goes on. Well, General Motors has really dominated the first half of the Super Series. They've won four of the first five events. The Monte Carlo, in fact, has been as dominant here in Canada as it has been in the United States in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Out west, GM has also been very strong as Calgary's Wade Lee has taken the first three events out west in his Pontiac Grand Prix. Oh, absolutely. General Motors has come out of the box and gone right to the front this year, Pat. But I expect to see the fields get tightened up because this is one of the nice things that's happened because of the spread of the monies, more teams are competitive but it has a negative effect too. And that's the fact that the drivers have gotten more aggressive trying to get to the front to win some of that prize and contingency money that's available. For instance, there's 50 odd thousand dollars out for grabs tonight. Everybody wants a piece of it and it makes it tough. Well, on a tight race track, your starting position is all important and it all begins with time trials. And Paul Mathers set the pace and as a matter of fact, has been quick all season in time trials. The trick now for Paul is to parley these quick starts with some convincing wins. So the Mopar Fast 4 looks like this. Paul Mathers on top with a lap at 18.48 seconds, followed by a guy who's been in the Mopar Fast 4 at each of our previous events, Duke Sachuk. He's tied with Sean Dupuy out of Windsor, both of those drivers at 18.50. Kerry Mix, the current national Cascar points leader, edged into the Fast 4 group with a lap at 18.51. And earlier today, we had the first of two heat races to determine the grid for the final. And here's how Pat called those races. Off of turn number four, looking for the green. They'll get it from Don Damaris. And it'll be number 10, Paul Mathers, who'll grab the early lead. Up to the outside, Sean Dupuis of the seven car challenging Mathers as they run down the back chute. It's number 10, Paul Mathers in the fourth Thunderbird, followed by number seven, Sean Dupuis. Then the 06 Dodge Avenger of John Gunn, the yellow car number 90. Rob Neely runs it fourth and oh, number three, Dan Shirtliff just got tapped by 25, Jim Lapsovich of the Tim Hortons Thunderbird as they fight it out here for that fifth place position. Big battle there for the number five spot and we go on board with Sean Dupuy as he tries to run down the leader. Paul Mathers in that motion, Ford Thunderbird, part of the great crowd here at St. Eustache, looking at the first of our heat races. Number 10, Mathers still leading Dupuis. Now the battle between the 06 car of John Gunn and moving up into the fourth place position will be the 25 of Jim Lapsovich. Off of turn number four, here is Sherlock O. Lapsovich, 25 is slowing on the front straightaway. He's pulled off on the inside. So evidently some problems there for the Tim Hortons Ford Thunderbird of Jim Lapsovich. We go on board with Sean Dupuis as he continues to park that Monte Carlo right on the rear bumper of the leader Mathers. The back
Race Heat Race, advanced Mathers, Dupuis, Shirtlip, Gott, Neely to the final 100 lapper, along with Peter Gibbons, Alex Nagy, Grant, Ross, and Bochum. And here's Pat with the highlights of the second heat race. A big crowd here at St. Eustache looking to turn four as the field comes to the line. They'll get the green one more time in a turn one up to the outside. Kerry Mix in the Midas Monte Carlo grabs the lead. Duke Sachuk down to the bottom of the racetrack and Mix goes to the front. Sachuk number 74 in the Pontiac Grand Prix running in the second place spot. And now we go on board with Brad Jakes in car 35. He runs in that third place position just behind him on the racetrack. The double zero of Steve Monroe and our Saudi handy cam mounted in the rear of Brad Jakes number 35. Dynamax Avenger giving us those great shots of the battle here for third place. And now number 17, DJ Kennington has jumped ahead of Monroe to take over that fourth place position. A little bit further back, we look at the battle here between the 31 car of Kelly Williams as she tries to get around number 38, Billy Rouse Jr. Kelly Williams side by side there with the fourth Thunderbird. Duke Sachak number 74, and oh, 38, Billy Rouse Jr. loops it around. Oh, Kelly Williams right into Mike Herniak, and it looks like Williams has damaged her car and Herniak into the wall. Oh, and now we've got fire on board DJ Kennington's car. They'll get the fire extinguisher into the engine compartment and put that out as we go back to the race leaders. Number 02 there, Gary Mix, followed by 74, Duke Sachuk, as Sachuk tries to low line off of turn number four in a one, and it's still just about half a car length, not even that, separating these two drivers as they continue to battle at it. Down the back straightaway into turn number three. Remember, in qualifying, they were one one-hundredth of a second apart against the clock. Here is Mix, your leader, back to the line. Sachuk, 74, will finish in second. And there's the finishing order as Kerry Mix edges out Duke Sawchuck, followed by Jakes, Monroe, and Kelly Williams. Then it's Glinsky, Manjin, and an always improving Kevin Trevlin in eighth. And we'll be back with more Cascar Racing from St. Eustache after this. Along with Pat Gonzalez as the 27 starters roll out for the pace laps. Cascar Race Director Louis Bennett getting the cars to uh, form up here as we go with the 14 rolls. The one driver who will not make the starting grid here is Jim Lapsovich after blowing an engine. Cascar officials have in fact inverted the top six. There you see Mix and Mathers, our heat race winners, starting back in that third row. Kelly Williams with a good start there in row five. Kevin Trevelin, the steadily improving young driver. There's Paul Cudahy, one of the regulars at Capital City Speedway. Junior Regan starting way back in row 12. Neil Fair, DJ Kennington in that 13th row. There you see Herniak, who has actually gone to a backup car after running into the wall during the heat race. We go on board with John Gaunt. There is Dan Shirtliff in the number three Goodrich Monte Carlo. The drivers just try to get some heat into those tires. Well, Pat, it was a very hot day, as you're well aware. And, of course, the oil's worked out of the track a little bit, making it very slippery. And these guys have warned not to be aggressive. So, you know, it's going to be tough getting to the front. They're going to have to run the outside to get there. Well, we have a very appreciative and enthusiastic crowd here at St. Eustache. It's standing room only as the cars work their way down the back straightaway on that front row 35 is brad jakes in the dynamax avenger right beside him the number three of dan shirtliff and a little bit of a tap there as they come off of turn number four looking for the green flag here from don damaris and they will get it we're racing at st eustache brad jakes grabs the early lead there's terry mix he got bumped going into that first turn had to drop down to the inside of the racetrack and number 74 duke sachuk quickly jumps out in front ahead of brad jakes and now we've got that battle for second place between dan shirtliff and brad jakes and look at shirtliff all over the rear bumper of brad jakes as the sony handicam gives us these great pictures of this war going on for the number two spot between the two black cars Jakes in the Dodge Avenger, shirtlift in the Chevrolet Monte Carlo as they hit the stripe, and now it's Mix running in fourth. And here's another look at the start from Sean Dupuis' point of view. He pushes shirtlift to the inside, then shirtlift chops Mix off, but Terry makes a great recovery to hang on to fourth spot. Here is Dan Shirtliff up to the outside of Brad Jakes. They go side by side as Shirtliff tries the high groove as they come back to the stripe. There you can see Sachuk, who's opened up a pretty good lead. They're still running side by side into turn one. Shirtliff swings a little bit wide, and here comes Kerry Mix. He wants the spot, but Shirtliff will jump up into the number two spot. Jakes appears to be having some kind of a problem because here is Mix. He's all over Jakes for the third place position. Well, I think that Brad's car is a little tight at the moment. At Pat and he's not turning into the corner well that's forcing the other guys to move up a little higher on the racetrack but they want
position now. Sean Dupuis will try to get around the Dynamax Dodge Avenger. And there's John Gott in the 0-6. He's also moving up now to challenge. 35, Brad Jakes having all kinds of problems in a spin. DJ Kennington, number 17, has looped the Castrol Dodge Avenger around in turn two. And there's the Midas standings with Sawchuck ahead of Shirtliff, Mix, Jakes, and Dupuis. Then it's Gaunt, Mathers, Monroe, Neely, and Gibbons. Caution flag out here on the speedway. Let's take a look at DJ Kennington's spin from the Mopar replay. There you can see Kennington just fighting the steering wheel, and Craig, it just looked as though he lost the car coming off of turn two. Well, I said earlier that it's a little slippery, and DJ's probably a little anxious, Pat. He had to start at the back of the racetrack today, and he's trying hard to work his way to the front. Well, one driver who has had no problem getting to the front is 74, Duke Sachuk who had a great run in time trial. Sachuk leads them back off of turn number four as they come back to the start-finish line. We're back to green flag racing. Sachuk in that key tours, number 74 Grand Prix. Here's a good battle a little bit further back. John Gott, number 06, pulls up alongside of the 35 of Brad Jakes. And now we go on board with Jakes, who continues to slide backward through the top 10. That's 97. Rob Neely in the yellow car all over Jakes, as is the 06 there of John Gott. These two drivers side by side trying to get around that 35 Dynamax Avenger. Car number 93, Alex Nagy Jr. running in the ninth place position. Peter Gibbons is 10th. This is a great five-way fight going on for that sixth place position. And at the moment, Brad Jakes in car 35 holds that sixth place position. And now we go on board with Peter Gibbons, the NTN bearing Monte Carlo. He is back in that tenth place position trying to get around the AC Delco Monte Carlo of Alex Nagy Jr. There's the 06 of John Gunn. That is a great fight going on among these drivers. Well, you can see how important it is to have that inside line in the corners. If the guy in front of you gets a little loose, you can move up on the inside of him and get by. That's John Gaunt, the 06 Dodge Avenger, and I asked him to compare this year's car with last year's LeBaron. It's a little longer, uh, which we've uh, helped us out as far as scaling the car and getting some more left side weight, so we feel it's a better car. The body uh, helps us a little bit more in the aerodynamics, and the chassis is helping us a little bit more, too. And Dan Shirtliff and Terry Mix have needed no help at all to close right up on the leader, Duke Sachuk, as we've got a great three-way fight now. Sachuk, 74, who's led much of this race now, coming under pressure from the two Monte Carlos. Oh, and Mix gets into the back of Shirtliff. Well, I guess Kerry mustn't have heard the warning given out at the driver's meeting that race director Louis Bennett will not tolerate any more overly aggressive driving. That move has pushed Shirtliff back to third. Duke Sachuk, your race leader, 0-2 Kerry Mix, the new second place driver, and that was an aggressive move to move the Midas Monte Carlo up into the second place position. Paul Mathers in the Thunderbird still leading this train of cars that are fighting for the other positions in the top ten. Duke Sachuk, the leader, all gets tapped by Kerry Mix. Mix pulls up alongside, challenging for the lead, but Sachuk will hold him off. The number three car, Shirtliff, also jumps up there, and there's only a couple of car lengths separating those top three drivers. Well, Kerry is gunning for more than just a win here tonight. As points leader, he's got his eye on that national championship and the beautiful V10 Dodge Ram Dooley that comes with it. Here's his thoughts. Yeah, we're pretty pleased. Uh, you know, we won our first race of the Super Series, and, you know, that, that kept us on top all the way through now. So we're only six points. Uh, or Sean Doopy's only six points behind us in second, so um, it's a real close battle. We're uh, we're happy with what we've uh, done this year so far. We've you know we've been in the top five uh, every race that we've uh, had this year, so consistency is a big thing, like I've always say, and and uh, it looks real good for us. And real good right now as Kerry waits for Sachuk to make one little error. Well, Kerry's hoping for a second national championship as we ride with Gibbons in the NTN Bearings Monte Carlo. Kerry won the championship in 93 and is watching the Western Cascar Series to see what Wade Lee is up to. Wade has won all the Western races so far this year. And Craig, these Eastern drivers will be visiting the Western drivers in a couple of weeks in Calgary at Race City Speedway for the GM Goodrich AC Delco 5. And that should be a real national point shootout. You ride on board with the 06 of John Gaunt, that Dodge Avenger, right up alongside of the 93 of Alex Nagy Jr. This is the fight for ninth. Just ahead of Gaunt is the NTN Bearings Monte Carlo of Peter Gibbons. He currently runs to the eighth place position. And the car right in the middle of what is a great five-way fight going on for that sixth place position. And now we've got a caution flag out here on the speedway. And Don Damaris with the yellow flag. And here's the Mopar replay from on 
fourth, Kennington's Castro sponsored Avenger as he just T-bones number 98 going into turn three. Craig, I think DJ was showing some of the frustration of that earlier fire as his crew looks on, and we'll return with more Cascar action after this. Welcome back to the Castro 200 from the Autodrome St. Stash as we get ready for the third restart of the night. 74, Duke Sachuk takes the green from Don Damaris. The car's running on the lead lap. Up in that outside groove, Sachuk 74 in the key tours Grand Prix, leading the 0-2 there of Kerry Mix. Sachuk's away to another great start. There's number three, the third place driver is Dan Shirtliff and the Preston Sony wall cam giving us these great shots as those Cascar late models run down the front straightaway. Duke Sachuk 74 by just a couple of car lengths over the 0-2 of Kerry Mix, shirtlift in the Goodrich Monte Carlo, running in third. And there's the Prestone update showing the car still on the lead lap. Al Turner, last year's winner here at St. Hugh Stash, up to 13. And Kelly Williams running well in 16. And you know, we're going to have more on Kelly later during the Dynamax timeout feature. Greg, amazing that after all this racing, there's still 18 cars running on the lead lap. And right at the front of that train is that 74 Key Tours Grand Prix of Duke Sanchuk, who's had a brilliant run. There is the 0-2 of Kerry Mix as he closes back up. Shirtlift in the number three. Goodwrench Monte Carlo is right there. Now we slide back in the top ten. This is the 0-6 of John Gott running in the 10th place position at the moment. You saw the 27 car there of Junior Regan as Gott in that Dodge Avenger trying to stay in the top 10. But he's got Billy Rouse Jr. down at the bottom of the racetrack. And on the inside, Billy Rouse Jr. will take over that 10th place position. So Gott gets pushed back into the 11th as they continue to trade positions all the way through the running order. Up front, the trio of drivers, 74, Duke Sanchuk, 02, Kerry Mix, and number three, Dan Shirley. That is your race. The fourth place car there is the number seven of Sean Dupuis, 35. Brad Jake still runs in the fifth spot. Well, as we indicated earlier, these short tracks are great learning grounds for drivers. And here's Pat with a Dynamax timeout on one of Cascar's rising stars. Racing worldwide has traditionally been a male-oriented domain, but that is changing. Layla Lombardi was the first successful female Formula One driver in Europe, and Shirley Muldowney made her mark racing top fuel dragsters in the NHRA series in the United States. The driver of this GM Goodrich Pontiac Grand Prix, Kelly Williams, has her sights set on becoming one of the top late model stock car drivers in Canada. I race because I want to race, and it's not anything to do with a gender role by any means. And I think that if, if you want to race, I think you should race. And I was fortunate that I was given the opportunity to get into racing with my dad and my crew chief and, and everyone like that helped me do it. I would have to say that my overall goal is to make racing a full-time job for myself. And um, to do that, I put my teaching career on hold and said to myself, I'm going to do what I have to do to, to make that go. You know, if it doesn't pan out in the next couple years, well, then I'll have to hang it up and say, yeah, I tried. But at least I can say I tried. Well, Kelly's got a lot to be proud of. She had a top 10 finish at the last Super Series race in Cayuga and is 14th in the Eastern Championship point standings. 74, Duke Sachuk, the race leader, will be greeted by yet another caution as 55, Neil Fair and Chris Brandt, 53, are involved. Well, the Mopar replay, if you look, shows a little bit of fluid coming out of Neil Fair's overflow. He could have overheated and spun in his own water, I think, Pat. Chris Brandt and Neil Fair are now pointed in the right direction, and we'll be back with more Cascar action from St. Eustache and the Castro Cup after this. Welcome back to the Castro 200 from the Autodrome St. Eustache. This sixth race of the Super Series for late model stock cars has been a royal affair with the Duke. That's Duke Sawchuck holding court on challenge since the get-go. Duke Sawchuck by about five car lengths ahead of that second place battle. And now we go on board with Brad Jake, 35. He gets a tap from 97, Rob Neely. Neely pulling up alongside now of Jake's as they run down the back chute. Number nine, Peter Gibbons of the NTN Monte Carlo is also right there in this great three-way fight going on for the fifth place position. Jake's just tries to sandwich himself between the two Monte Carlos as Neely, number 97, holds that fifth place spot. On board with Sean Dupuy, you saw 0-2, Kerry Mix, who has slowed. Dupuy has taken over third, Mix running slowly back and forth, and as he comes on the front straightaway, Kerry Mix has definitely got a major problem here with that Midas Monte Carlo after such a great...
great run. And now 44, that is Steve Jalebi, and he has got a problem with his car. Let's now go to the pits and check in with race leader Duke Sacek's crew chief. Duke's got four laps to go. Uh, what's it going to take to get to the finisher? Uh, he just wants to run a smooth line going into the uh, turn one and two. He's having trouble there right now, but uh, uh, if he can keep his line, he'll be okay. There's Kerry Mix taking on fuel, but you know, Pat, I'm certain it's something more than that. This, of course, is going to cost the Midas team dearly as far as the national championship points are concerned. And, Craig, of course, all of the other top contenders know that they can make up some ground on that Midas team with a strong finish here as we go back to green flag racing. There is Duke Sacek, 74. You heard that he was having a bit of a problem here in turns one and two, but I tell you, he's getting that car through the first couple of turns there very nicely. Well, he's having to work hard at it, Pat. It looks to me as though the car's picked up a bit of a push, and that moves the car to the outside lane. Hopefully, nobody will get up alongside of him before this race is finished. In a turn one, Duke Sachuk running a little bit higher up in that bottom groove as we ride on board with Sean Dupuy. It's a three-driver shootout. 74, Duke Sachuk, who's led since the opening lap as they come back to the start-finish stripe. Sachuk, number 74, hang it on. Shirtlift aboard the number three. Goodrich Monte Carlo is right there on his rear bumper. Sachuk pulls away by about a car length, but again, in a turn three, Shirtlift is able to close it up along with Sean Dupuy off of turn four. They look for the white flag, and they will get it from Don DeBarris. Less than a lap to go. Duke Sachuk hanging on. Shirtlift is right there. Try to find a way around this number 74 Pontiac Grand Prix. But Sachuk is making that car very, very wide here now. Just one corner to go. Duke Sachuk off the final turn. He'll take the checkered flag for the win. It'll be Shirtlift in second. Sean Dupuy will come home in third. And what a great race by the Windsor native. And there are the Midas final standings with Duke Sawchuk taking his first cast car win since 93, followed by Shirtlift, Dupuy, Neely, and Brad Jakes. And in sixth, it's Peter Gibbons, then Nagy, Reagan, Mathers, and Al Turner. And here's Pat with the winner. Duke Sawchuk, a tremendous drive out there tonight. That car appeared to be strong all night. Well, we had a really good car. We had a push for about the last 12 laps. That's a little concerned with, and uh, we managed to hold on to her. Uh, Dan was gonna, I knew Dan was going to be tough. Actually, Kerry was pretty tough, but uh, luck, luckily uh, for me, it was my night, and you know, the, uh, Dan was right there, but uh, we were able to hold them off, so that was great for the whole team and us. And it was equally good for Sean Dupuy because with his third-place finish, it vaulted him into the Eastern National Championship lead, but it's a slim one, Pat. Well, Craig Hill, Duke Sacek has been great in time trials all season long, but he put it all together here tonight. Oh, an absolute great race by the Duker. You know, has this ever thrown the points championship wide open, Pat? Unfortunate for Kerry Mick, lost his ignition right there at the end of the race. Good race by Dan Shirtliff and Sean Dupuy. And now we've got a race to the end of the season, I'll tell you that. We'll pick it up next week as we go back to Ontario on the Oval at Peterborough Speedway. For Craig Hill, I'm Pat Gonzalez saying so long from St. Eustache in Quebec. The Castrol 200 was brought to you in part by Mopar Performance Parts, your first choice. Castrol, manufacturers of GTX. GM Goodwrench Service Plus and AC Delco. STP and Prestone. And Dynamax Performance Exhaust. This event was sanctioned by CASCAR, Canadian Association for Stock Car Auto Racing.